Hi guys, my name is Shelly. Welcome to At Home with Shelly Lynn and welcome to my baker's closet. If you guys haven't seen that video where I transformed my coat closet into a baker's closet, maybe you might be interested in watching that video. I'll have it linked at the end of this video and also in the description box for you guys if you're interested in watching that video. I did get a request to create this video, so hopefully you find some motivation or inspiration on the kind of things that you want to get if you're starting a new bakery business or you want to learn how to bake and stuff like that. I'll show you some of the tools that I use. And I'm going to warn you now that a lot of my tools are very old. I make everything by hand. It's the easiest things that you can find at Walmart or Amazon, even Joann's or Michael's. And I have my cubby box here that has little drawers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just organized them in this way. It's functional, it's easy, I and I feel like everything is once in one spot and I can just get to everything that I need when I'm starting to bake a cake or anything else. I keep all of my small things in here like all of my tools, my piping bags, my measuring cups and spoons, markers, fondant smoothers and paint palettes, all of my cupcake liners and wraps. I try to organize my treat bags by size so that they're easily accessible all of my ribbon for cake borders and a variety of fondant molds and stencils but for today I'm just gonna get started on all the supplies and tools and stuff that I use just for cakes and cupcakes if you're interested in this video and you like it please give me a thumbs up maybe I'll go ahead and do another video with all the tools that I use for cookies and dipping all of my treats in I had a hard time figuring out how I was gonna create this video this is all new to me I wasn't expecting this. Uh, like I had said, I had a viewer who re requested this video. So it took me some time to think how I was gonna compile this together and create this video for you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I just wanna mention that I keep all of my things separate from my kitchen supplies and my baking supplies. It just helps me keep track of everything, make sure I have everything in the right place. I know where it's at when I go to bake. Some of the obvious things that you're gonna to wanna to use when you're first starting a bakery is your utensils to make your buttercream, your batter, and you're also going to need your icing spatulas. I have so many of them that I've collected along the way, but I have figured out the ones that I like the most. Silicone ones are the best, especially if they're not detachable because that way you don't grow mold. That's important to me. I prefer the silicone molds and they come in different sizes. They come in different shapes, like this one's rounded and scalloped kind of around the edge here. This is to help you uh, scoop out buttercream on the bottom of your bowl. I also like the ones that are flat, like this one. It's flat, whereas this one is rounded. This is something that you're gonna to wanna to use also if you're like transferring your buttercream into a big container, if you're making a big batch of buttercream, this will help scoop it out. But honestly, I just feel like the flat ones work best for that because I also have another tool that I use to actually scoop out buttercream that I think works out better, like this one, the rounded one. And I got these from the Dollar Tree. It, it came in a set of three. It came with a scalloped edge, which I used to pull out buttercream with. I use this one to scrape small cakes with. And I use this one hardly ever, but it's a cake comb to create simple rigid lines around your buttercream cake. Um, I, it's a pretty good deal, $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. I also have another set that I found at Walmart. I don't remember how much these cost, but they were more expensive than the ones from the Dollar Tree. So if you're looking for these, go to the Dollar Tree. It's your best deal. But the next things that you're going to want to get is a variety of icing tools. This one was given to me, I don't even know where it came from, but my mom had this in her kitchen and she just gave it to me in a box full of like forks and knives and spoons, like cutlery and stuff like that. And I actually really like this thing. I think this helps take out cakes out of the pan after they've cooled down and you're ready to take them out of the pan. I like using this one to cut the domes off if I do, which is rare, but if I cut the domes off my cake, I like this serrated, serrated edge. Serrated edge. I also use this one to help spread my buttercream. I also like using my mini tool. This one actually works just as good as this one, only this one has a little bit of an angled edge to it. And it's a bit shorter, so it works well on smaller cakes, but really I like the angled handle on it because it keeps my fingers away from the cake and smudging the buttercream as I'm icing it. But I use both spatulas very often. I just like having options depending on what I need it for. Sometimes I use both just in case one gets dirty. I have a backup one so I don't need to stop what I'm doing. These two are my best friends when it comes to icing cake. I have this large one. I don't really use it a whole lot for me because my hands are so small. I have tiny hands. 
this is too heavy for me and it ends up cramp uh, cramping my wrist and I don't like it. Definitely get yourself a set of these in different sizes. I also found this one from the Dollar Tree. I really love using this one. It's such a simple yet effective tool to help smooth out the edges of squared cakes. You can cut the buttercream down to get those crisp edges. You could also use it to cut off excess buttercream off the top of your cakes to smooth out the edges of your buttercream. You can get to the bottom and fill up any gaps at the bottom of your cake that has some holes in it that you want to patch up real quick. This is perfect for that. Okay, so this is probably a little bit of a no-brainer as well, but you're going to want to get yourself a variety of cake boards in different sizes. Usually I will buy the multi-pack from Walmart. It's perfect for when you're doing tiered cakes, but I always pick up extra because whenever I do the flip methods on my cake, I have to have an extra board for the top. And these ones, I feel like they're the best, which is kind of ironic because I found out that the way to celebrate brand is taking over the Wilton brands. They kind of act like Wilton brand as well, and even though they only have two stars right now, I still prefer to purchase the way to celebrate cake boards from, the, from Walmart over the stir everyday cake boards from Joann's because they're a bit pricier and in my opinion they do the same job. Even with a coupon it doesn't really make much of a difference so I get most of my cake boards and even boxes at Walmart. But honestly I feel like they're better than the ones that you would get from Amazon because they have this little hole in it. This little hole does wonders especially when you're stacking and tearing your cakes. The ones that I've purchased from Amazon don't have that hole. That dowel rod is supposed to go down the center of your cake. Let's just pretend that I'm tearing a cake right now. Your dowel, rod, your dowel rod will fit perfectly down in the center of that cake. While we're on the subject, I also suggest in stocking up on different colors of vinyl paper. And you can find these in the crafter square section of the Dollar Tree. And they work way better than the silver or gold cake board wrap that you find at Walmart. And they're so much cheaper. Other than the fact that you can use them in your Cricut, I also use them to cover my cake boards with. They have a pretty decent variety of colors and you can get them in glitter or matte and glossy colors. They're not considered technically food safe, but they are non-toxic. So usually I'll sit my cake directly on a cake board the same size of my cake so that my cake is not sitting on the vinyl paper. They also have smaller sheets in the school section or the stationery supplies. I've used those to wrap small cake boards with or even double them up if they don't have the color that I like in the crafter square section. The Jot brand works just as well too. I also like to make my own boxes. So what I like to do is I like to take those poster boards from the Dollar Tree. You get one for $1.25. Uh, they come in varieties of different colors, but I like to get the white ones because they look more professional. They look like store-bought ones, and I'll usually box them up myself. So one day I'll show you how I do that, but pretty much I just create a box like this, and then I'll create another box for the top. And then with the same poster board, I'll measure out strips and fold them in half to make posts on all four sides of the cake. After that, I'll put the top box over the post and then cover the whole thing with cellophane. Sometimes they're a little hard to find at the Dollar Tree, so if you can't find them there, you can go to Dollar General and they will most likely have some there, and they're roughly around the same price. A lot of times they don't make tiered boxes, and if they do, they're expensive, so it's best to just make your own. Okay, so next is my tools. I love having all of my tools, but I don't really use a whole lot of them. I also have a bunch of different brushes that I use if I'm going to be painting on my cake. I buy all of my my painting brushes from the Dollar Tree. They don't last very long but they do the job. Although lately Dollar Tree hasn't had a large supply of brushes but I'll also go to the Dollar General. They have a good supply of brushes in different sizes and decent quality for a fair price. You could also go to Walmart and they will have a bunch of different sets for you in different sizes and varieties, but I like the Dollar Tree ones. I feel like they work just as good as they do and they last just as long. Just know that when you're using your brushes very often, it's not they're not going to last that long anyway. If you really want a really good set, you can go off to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and you can find a good set of brushes there that might last a little bit longer if you are into painting on your cakes often. But if you're just painting on cakes, sometimes then the Dollar Tree ones work good good but you can also find these from the Dollar Tree and they work pretty good you don't really need to have anything fancy especially as a beginner the Dollar Tree tools will work really well and they have several for you to get started with 
Here are some of the tools that I use the most, mainly ball tools for flowers, the stitching tool to create stitching lines, and other fondant or embossing tools that will help you create handmade cake toppers so you can see you really don't need a whole lot to get started. I've been doing cake for eight years and I still don't need a whole lot of tools. But if you don't prefer shopping at Dollar Tree for tools and brushes, Walmart has a decent variety of brush sets, tools, and tips as well. So maybe start there if you want to build more of a known brand kind of repertoire of tools and things that you'll need for cake and cupcake decorating. You can also find fondant smoothers, cake combs, rolling pins, and markers that will fit all of your needs. Don't forget Amazon has a wide variety as well. The next tool that you're going to want to have, and you're going to want a lot of these because they don't stay sharp forever, but they're exacto knives. I got these from the Dollar Tree, and I think it came in a set of three, and I got it in the hardware section, but you can find ones like this at Walmart that are a little bit better quality, but these will, these do, will the job. do the job. I also use paring knives, but a lot of times I'll use the exacto knives to trim off the edges of my buttercream. I'm like, to trim off the um, excess fondant off my cakes whenever I'm wrapping cakes in fondant. I also use this to cut fondant pieces out and stuff like that, especially if I'm doing like accent pieces for my cakes. I'll use an X-Acto knife to get a good precision around whatever object that I am cutting out. So always make sure to have X-Acto knives on hand. They come in handy and get a lot of them because like I said, the blades don't last very long, but the ones from the Dollar Tree are pretty good. I've said this a lot in my videos and I still stand by it. Always make sure to have markers on hand. I've collected so many markers. A lot of them I don't even really use anymore and a lot of these are really old. I prefer the dual sided markers, one with a brush or shading tip and the other side with a fine or precision tip. I don't really use the fat markers. You can pretty much find these anywhere. Once in a while I might find use for them, but when I first started baking, they didn't have anything else. So I'd use them to add details to fondant or gum paste figurines, but over the years a lot of my work has changed. And if you've been with me since my channel first started, coloring is something that I really love to do. So with sugar sheets and these dual sided markers, I have so many uses for them. So anytime I see a fine tip or precision tip marker, I'll grab them. I was able to find these neon dual tip markers from Kate Craft at Walmart. When I saw them, I was like, oh, you're coming home with me. So hopefully soon, more markers like this will come to the shelf soon. But if not, Amazon has a wide variety of markers that I like to use, and they're affordable. Here are some that I prefer purchasing off Amazon. So I just keep a variety of markers on hand in different colors. Um, I'm always searching Amazon and collecting them. I think that they make a big staple in my repertoire of tools that I use, um, especially if you like to color and you do a lot of fun and accent pieces, you should get those. Speaking of sugar sheets, I love, love having these on hand. I do not have an edible printer at this time, this time. but I'm hoping one day I will get my edible printer. Um, it takes money and right now because I don't sell my cakes, I do it for cost only. I'm not making any profit, so I can't save up for it right now. That's another reason why I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube, so that I can be, I can get my at-home bakery running, and one day I can have a studio of my own and um, have all of my stuff nice and neat and everything. But I do love to have these on hand. This is not my favorite brand. This is the Wilton Sugar Sheets. I got these from Party City. I used it for my son's birthday. And I will tell you that these will go stale very fast. They do not last long. You have to use them as soon as you buy them. Otherwise, as soon as you take them out of the package, they are going to crack and break and they will become useless. I can't even find them on Party City's website anymore. All I was able to find was this frozen edible sheet with cupcake circles, but they're out of stock. And Joann's has them on their website in a pack of three for over $13. That is so expensive for only two and a half stars. I'd rather scroll through Amazon and find better quality edible sheets for just a little bit more. I just ordered these ones on Amazon. You can get 24 sheets for $27, which only comes out to about $1.13 each, when I paid nearly $6 for one single sheet at Party City. Moral of the story, guys, go to Amazon. Just don't get confused with wafer paper. That is not the same as edible sugar sheets. Those have a hard time sticking to anything and they dissolve quickly when wet. The ones that you get on Amazon are a lot more pliable. They're softer, they're easy to work with. You can actually cut them out. 
and uh, they work well for coloring on and making whatever you want with them. I've used them for cake pops, for cookies, I've used them for cake. Um, okay, next on the list of my Mary Poppins little closet here, <laughs> um, I like to have two different sizes of turntables. I got these both at Walmart. This one I love using for cakes. It has a stand on it and it actually extends out. So it's even taller if you need it to be taller. And it goes back in just like that. It also has a stopper on it. So you can pull it out like that and it'll stop it from turning. Once you push it in, you can use it to turn your cakes around. I like that it has this here, but it's on, it's not really necessary because a lot of times when I'm using this, especially when I'm doing the flip method, it gets in the way, so you want to put an extra board down so that this doesn't get in the way because it's kind of like a grip. It keeps your cake board in place, but it's so big that if I'm doing like a six inch cake, it like sits in the hole here and I can't get into the bottom. So make sure you put down a cake board to help you with that. I use this one for my cookies because it's shorter and when I sit at my countertop, I like to have it right there and I put a, a napkin on top and I work on my cookies that way, but it doesn't carry a whole lot of weight. So when you're doing large cakes, like three tiered cakes, this isn't going to be the best. I did have one of these before and it did get really wobbly and uneven and I had to go out and purchase another one. So that's why another reason why I use these for cookies only. And I use these for cakes because it's a lot more durable. <clears throat> it holds a lot more weight. It's more sturdy and it's extendable. So okay, another no brainer, but you're going to want to pick up a variety of cake pans. I just have the same set that I've used since I got started on day one. What I did was I collected cake pans as I was making cakes for family and friends to give me the experience and learn things. I learned everything on Google, everything on YouTube. I self-taught myself how to do things by trial and error and every time I had a different size cake I would buy a new cake pan. I just used the two inch pans in different sizes so I got six, eight, ten, and twelve. Um, I didn't go any farther than that because when I first started baking, I was only using a confectional oven. It's a countertop confection oven. I was using that to bake my cakes in because I was running off propane and it was really expensive for me to bake my cakes in a propane oven and I couldn't figure out how to get my cakes to bake in the oven without them sinking in the middle. So I only went up to 12 and I never changed from then. I've, I've never really had use for a 14 inch cake pan. They do work, I do like them. They're very durable, they last forever. So I'm just using the Wilton brand, but you can see they're all dented up now. These are the original cake pans I've been using ever since then. I'm telling you all of my stuff is old. I have not invested it's because I just don't have the funds to do it. So I use this and you know what? It works. If you want to get yourself some cake pans, they sell these at Walmart, but they're kind of hard to find, so you might want to check Joann's or Michael's or Amazon. That's probably your best bet is to get yours on Amazon, especially if you want to get a set. So they do sell these in a tiered set. They don't come in doubles. They come in singles, so you might want to get yourself a set of two. That way, you know, you can make a tiered with two layers each especially if you want a really tall cake. For my sheet cake pans, I just buy whatever's cheap. I don't buy anything that's too expensive because I don't really use them a whole lot. And if I do, it's mainly for cake pop dough. So, you know, don't go above and beyond to buy expensive sheet cakes unless you specialize in sheet cake pans. But they do sell those in the Wilton brand. I've just picked mine up from the Dollar General. You can pretty much get them anywhere. Same with my cake, cupcake pans. I get those from Walmart in the little bakery section where all the cake pans are. Those are perfect. You don't need anything spectacular for that. They all bake up the same. Okay, so the next thing that I like to use the most is a ruler. This helps me measure my cakes to make sure that they're leveled. I also use a leveler. This is my best friend when it comes to measuring especially square cakes. This helps me measure it out perfectly so it comes out as even as possible. Get a metal one because it's easiest to clean and it, it's most sanitary in my opinion. The one that has the cork board on it. I don't like it. Because it also has a gap right there. So I prefer using the metal ones. And they also make them in 18 inches long and I'll use those to make my boxes with. So maybe you might want to get yourself two different sizes. 
and I think that'll do you good. Like when I did my Honey Bee cake, I had the octagon cutter. I had these. I only used the bigger one, but it came, came in, in a three pack of different sizes. I always keep stuff like this on hand. These are very useful because if you try to do these by hand, it will take you forever. I also bought the square ones when I did the Minecraft cake for my son's birthday. Those those came in handy but stuff like that you probably want to buy as you're doing them you don't want to like overdo it and then buy a buy bunch a of bunch materials of that you don't really need right away and then you never use them and it's kind of waste of money so I just buy stuff like this whenever I have a cake that comes up where it requires using something like this Keep that in mind that when you're first starting off a bakery there's really no need for you to run out and buy a bunch of different cutters unless you're actually gonna have use for them Okay, let's go back to basics. I used to make a ton of flowers, so I bought the Wilton flower cutter set. One kind of like this. I made a lot of different flowers, and these cutters made it very awesome to make. But over the years, they broke or bowed while trying to clean them, and I haven't been asked lately for flowers. But if you're into gum paste flowers, having a set like this on hand is good to have. Also, make sure to have a good mat to roll out your gum paste flowers on or any fondant pieces on, a rolling pin, and fondant smoothers. I've also collected tons of molds to create accent pieces along the way. These molds are amazing and usually super affordable. I get mine on Amazon because Etsy is very pricey, plus I really hate the shipping cost. You may also need some stencils. I get mine on Amazon as well. You can find some of them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but certain designs like the Louis Vuitton is a specialty item, so you'll have to order those online or possibly have them specially made. You can sometimes find stencils like these at the Dollar Tree. They are not the best, but they do well in a pinch. Walmart and Dollar General have a decent assortment as well. Lastly, I keep this caddy with an assorted mix of tips, gel food coloring, edible glitter, and petal dust. I like to use these mini letter stamps sometimes. They were at Michael's a few years ago. I honestly don't think they even carry them anymore, but you could search Amazon. I have a bunch of food coloring. I prefer using the drop liquid kind over the Wilton gel paste. It's just easier for me, but I keep a wide variety in different colors. I also keep my glitter sprays in here. I love glitterifying my cakes after they're done. It just makes them sparkle and adds a little extra something to the cake. And of course, I have a fondant extruder with extra plates with tons of different shapes for cake borders and things. This is kind of bulky and kind of heavy. I don't know if I'm really going to be able to pick it up. Maybe I'll just put it right here on the screen. My, one of my best friends bought me an airbrush machine and I didn't realize how much I really needed it until I actually had it. It was one of those things that I went years without and I'm so happy and grateful to have it now. It's like one of my biggest things that I love having the most. For me, it kind of replaced the need to have to color a lot of fondant. I never really know how much fondant I'm actually going to need to cover a cake with. So sometimes I'm left over with extra fondant and I don't have enough white afterwards. So this helps eliminate fondant waste. Um, you can live without one, but it is always good to have one on hand. Another one of my best friends in the kitchen when I'm baking is a steamer. I got this from Ross a long time ago. It was relatively cheap. I think this one was only like $10. But this thing is amazing. All it does is heat up, you fill it up with water, it heats up and it pushes out steam. I use this to get rid of any residual powdered sugar that's left over on my cake or I'll even use it to attach bonnet to cake. You don't need an expensive one. This little cheap one will do. You do have to refill it up pretty often, but dude, it's important. Get yourself a steamer. This will make your cakes look so much more clean. It'll transform it into a more beautifully eloquent and professional looking cake. Just steam it off and it looks shiny and like brand new. Another thing that I really love having on hand are these risers. These are actually to cool your cakes with. My mom gave me both of these, so I have no idea where she got hers from, but I'm sure you can find them anywhere like that at Walmart. You could probably find something like this. I'm sure you can find one on Amazon. I'm sure you can even find this at Michael's or Joann's, but definitely get yourself these. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think that there's anything else in my bag of tricks here for you guys other than just ingredients, you know, like my sprinkles and stuff. 
Eventually one day I am going to figure out a different way to organize this pantry. For now this is perfect for me. It's very functional. It works. I love it. It's very useful and I'm so glad that I did this and I'm glad that you guys got some insight and some motivation out of it. I know that it took me a long time for me to create this video and I'm sorry that it did. That's it for now. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're new. Please comment down below if you have any suggestions for me. I'd love to hear them. Any criticism is welcome too as long as you keep it nice. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.